Greetings one and all, this is Lloyd Brown and welcome ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, social media family to my vlog. I'm trying to look into this camera like I can see and I can't see nothing. I mean look, I've got an eye, I've got an eye test appointment. Put on your glasses lad. <laughs> that is better. Now I can see clearly now the rain is gone. It looks like the rain is coming. But anyway, thank you for tuning in and watching my vlog. And um, it comes at the end of what can safely be said as a sad week. It's even been made more sad at the devastating news that UN Secretary General and Nobel Peace Prize winner Kofi Annan has passed. At the time of recording, he has passed, aged 80. So not only have we lost the Empress of Soul, from a personal perspective, Daddy, Count Prince Miller, we have now lost the Peacemaker as well. And it is very, very sad at the minute. But I wanted to make a video with a slight segue. Um, and it is something that both Aretha and Count Prince Miller have in common. They both have appeared in iconic movies. Um, Count Prince Miller appeared in the very first James Bond movie, Dr. No. He played a dancer in that. And um, Aretha Franklin um, appeared in the now seminal, iconic Blues Brothers movie, which starred Dan Aykroyd and also um, John Belushi, the late John Belushi. The movie was directed by John Landis. Now, if you don't know who John Landis is, I'm going to give you some bullet points, right? John Landis directed Michael Jackson's Thriller video. John Landis directed An American Werewolf in London. And John Landis directed Trading Places, which also starred Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, and a very young Eddie Murphy. That is the caliber of director we are dealing with. Now, why did movies come into mind? Well, because I saw a trailer for a movie directed by Idris Elba. Calm down, ladies. And um, the film is entitled Yardi. And I knew that photography and filming was basically going on. But for some reason, I thought the movie was released already. I don't know. You know, I didn't really take much notice of it. But on one of my videos, which was monetized, there was an advertisement and a trailer for Yardi on one of my videos. So I watched it and um, it was kind of fast moving, had the usual tropes in it, but I didn't think much of it. So I wanted to basically find out more about it. And it made absolute sense when I saw the news of the principal photography because I was looking at the, the soundtrack. It's like, yellow man and this and that. I could have put in old tunes in the soundtrack. But it made sense to me because of the blurb that I have read. Now, this is from the 16th of May. And it says, filming has begun on the project which is based on Victor Headley's cult novel. The first image from Idris Elba's directorial debut, Yardi, has been released. Studio Canal announced today, uh, 16th of March, that principal photography has started on the film based on Victor Headley's cult novel. Yardi star stars... Let me start again. Yardi stars Amal Amin, who stars in The Maze Runner. I think he had a bit of time in the bill as well, I'm not sure in the lead role of D with Stephen Graham and Idris Elba playing support roles. The film will introduce Jamaican actors Chantal Jackson, Sheldon Shepard and Everaldo Creedy. Yardi will shoot on location in London and Jamaica for seven weeks and is financed by Studio Canal, BFI, BBC Films and Screen Yorkshire. It follows the story of a young Jamaican named D who on arriving in early 1980s London unexpectedly finds the young man who assassinated his reverend brother back in Jamaica 10 years before. His quest for justice explode into a violent street war that could end up killing him and his loved ones. 
So that's what kind of spurred me to actually make this video. And the video is not about this movie. It's about a movie that's homegrown. And um, it's 38 years old this year. Um, alongside its counterpart. Now we all know the movie Rockers, right? Rockers is 40 years old. That was released in 1978. But the movie I'm talking about, which was released in 90, 1980, is Babylon. It just brought me to Babylon, so to speak. Babylon, as well as other movies, um, let me stick a pin on Babylon for a second. There's been other movies that has been made that has a resonance with me. And I want to take the opportunity to big up the, the director, Menelik Shabazz, for making a beautiful movie, moving, heartfelt movie called Burning an Illusion. Now, if you haven't seen that movie, I urge you to watch that movie. I urge you to watch that movie. That movie is an important movie and it's a celebrated movie. Um, but I want to talk about Babylon, you know, from the context of music and reggae music and sound systems and my generation. It's an important movie for me simply because of the fact that it actually represented my generation and it represented and chronicled the experience of people of my generation living in the UK and experiencing, well, being born and raised in the UK, I guess, but ultimately living in the UK and experiencing the racism that was abound in the UK in those times. And um, it's a movie that I never tire of watching. I can never tire of watching because watching Brinsley Ford watching Carl Howman in their respective lead roles and watching the supporting cast members and the music, you know, for the first time there was like a soundtrack that had an equal balance of music from the UK and music from Jamaica, you know, and that was basically the period when, when both, both musical, um, both musical contributions collided from, England and Jamaica where it all just fused into the one thing we know as reggae music and um, yeah I need to take the time and big up Dennis Bovell big up all the musicians that took part in the soundtrack it's an anthemic soundtrack I mean look when you hear when you hear this you can't, you can't help but bring a smile to your face. Beefy, man! Beefy! <laughs> that is Beefy's theme tune. That's Beefy's theme tune. I remember, I remember the scene where he's walking with the dog. So when I walk with a poodle, you don't see the head too big for the body or the head too small for the body. This is not a poodle. It's an African Ridgeback man. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have never seen another movie that has encapsulated the experience of sound system culture and has chronicled the hardships of the experience of living as a black man in the UK. Babylon done it to a T. Absolutely, absolutely. 
absolutely a truly celebrated movie and one of the highlights for me of this movie actually came before the movie's release i remembered um going to the notting hill carnival where aswad was on the bill and also eddie grant eddie grant was actually the headline act and um Aswad came on, done their set, and basically more or less finished. Finished with this. They said, right now, we're going to play a little rhythm. Soon to come on the movie Babylon. Coming out, blah, blah, blah. Run it. Reggie and sister, let me tell you something. I was there. I was there. When they played this tune, Warrior Charge, the sea of lux and red, gold, and green and ganja smoke that enveloped the whole air around Ladbrook Grove that evening. I can't even describe it. I cannot describe it. You just had to have been there. Because all you were seeing was like a sea of people. That's all you were seeing. That's all you were seeing. And you know something? Such was, such was the impact that Aswad made with that tune that night, they literally tore up the stage. Eddie Grant didn't even bother perform. And he was the headline act. He couldn't follow that. He could not follow that. <laughs> he just said, yep, yeah, that's it, done, gone. He went down to Electric Avenue, mate. <laughs> but yeah, just, just my musings on, on celebrating an iconic movie like Babylon. I mean, I could talk about this movie for, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, man. You know, such an influential movie. An influential movie. I remember watching both Babylon and Ruckers at the Rio Cinema in... Dawson as a double feature and them time he was allowed to smoke in this in the cinema Let's say they weren't smoking Benson and Edges in that place <laughs> But anyway, um, this is just a short big up to the late Franco Rosso who directed the movie and a big up to the cast, big up to everyone that, is, that was involved in the movie. And by way of thank you, thank you for leaving an indelible mark in movie history, chronicling the black man, woman experience in the United Kingdom and the sound system experience that enveloped it. So thank you, Franco. And thank you for watching. Um, Thanks for stopping by and um, just wanted to kind of reminisce after this sad week. So hope you've all enjoyed it. And as always, you done know the coup. People, please abstain from foolishness, even your own, even my own. And until I catch you on the next one, people, stay blessed. We're gone.